Hi everybody, this is Richard Ham. Today we are looking at the latest game from Ignacy Trez... Um, to, from the really talented designer of the excellent Stronghold and the absolutely amazing pret porter or Porter, pret porter um, This is his latest game. It is a cooperative um, island adventure with really strong thematic elements and strong storytelling for, um, I think, one to four players. Uh, and... It's a big game with lots of stuff going on, lots of moving pieces, and um, we're just going to jump right in and uh, kind of walk you through a few turns, see what it plays like. Um, and before I do, I should say, I would recommend anybody who wants to play this game, definitely go to Board Game Geek and download and print out the Robinson Crusoe um, round face summary from um, Pun the Hun. Uh, I think his real name is Loops, if I recall correctly. This is a lifesaver. This really should have come with the game on the back page. Although, on the back page, to be fair, there's a very useful um, list of the five billion icons that exist in the game. But anyway, uh, you will definitely rely heavily on this turn order summary sheet. So, um, we're just going to go on ahead and start running through the game. Now, um, we are playing in the Castaways scenario. The game comes with six scenarios, and I believe there's going to be a whole bunch more coming. You'll be able to download online. Um, this is the first one of the game, so it's uh, kind of the introductory one. They, you know, they turn off some of the features, but I'll still talk about the features when they come up. But anyway, you are Castaways on a deserted island. It is the end of summer. You have to prepare for winter, build shelter, roof, and palisade. It will be difficult to survive during the tough months of autumn and winter. You also have to build a pile of wood so you can fire it when you spot a ship on the horizon and call for help. Uh, basically, over the course of this particular scenario, while we're exploring the island and building items and trying to feed ourselves and stop from starving, we are also trying to build this big gigantic bonfire of wood. We have to, we always have to set aside some of the wood we're collecting to get ready for the bonfire because, as you can see, this takes place across 12 turns and on the last turn, 10, 11, and 12, ships show up out at sea. So if on 10, 11, or 12, we have the bonfire ready, we can win the game. Um, so there's a lot of time pressure to stay alive while getting ready for the ships that eventually come. Um, the first few months are, as it said, summer, so there's no nasty weather effects. But then when we get to autumn, we start getting some weather. Then we get into winter, it really starts hitting us hard, and we have to try and our best to stay alive while waiting for rescue. So that's the basics of this scenario. And like I said, there's a bunch of other ones. There's a, uh, oh, Volcano Island and um, Jenny needs help. She's trapped on an island. You have to rescue her. The uh, Robinson family where you actually have to, like, you can raise kids and, and grow crops and stuff. Uh, Cannibal Island. There's a lot of variety. Um, although any of these things you would definitely play multiple times because even if you're playing the same scenario, everything um, is different. You know, the uh, layout of the island is different. The items that are available to build are different. The, um, the uh, character types you're playing can be different. There's always tons of variety. But enough preamble. Let's just start playing the game. The first thing we do on every turn Turn, is we have our event phase, which by the way we skip in round one. Um, so I'll skip it um, because in the round one this is our event, food crates. It automatically comes out guaranteed. So we skip drawing a new event um, and we just have this food crates thing. Step number two, we do our morale phase um, where we get or uh, discard determination tokens. Now, Actually, I should say, um, all the phases are up here as well, you know, so you can always remember, you know, one through six, and, you know, the, the, you know, the numbers are on the board as well to help. But we're on step number two, the morale phase. We come over here, and we look at how we're doing as a group. Right now, at the beginning of the game, we start at zero. Um, we are neither demoralized or... Um, moralized or, you know, happy. We're neither happy nor sad. Things aren't really going. But if we, um, you know, succeed in actually rising this, raising this, in later turns, um, if we're in the positive, we can earn determination tokens. Whereas if, if our morale goes down, which it will, we start losing determination tokens because we start losing the will to live because we're demoralized. But anyway, beginning of the game, it's at zero. So on this turn, um, we neither gain nor lose determination. Next, we go to production. Collect a cube. So, Here's the whole island with a bunch of uh, random things we've yet to explore. And we are, here's our little, here's where we kind of set up camp, on the beach. Um, on the beach, we can get, during our production phase, one wood and one fish. So I'll go ahead and grab those. A wood and a wood and a fish. And that comes into our supply up there. Um, so this is stuff we have access to. Um, you know, if we were over on some other tile, 
whatever is there would be our default production for the day. Um, so we've done our production. Now we get to the meat of the game. We start planning our actions. Where This game is a worker placement game. Um, I'm playing a two-player game right now where myself, I am the cook. I have two actions I can do. And my lovely wife, uh, Jen, is the carpenter. Um, she has a whole bunch of special abilities. I have a whole bunch of special abilities. Between the two of us, we can do four actions. We've got these four workers. Also, because we're playing a two-player game, we also have our man Friday, a local uh, native bloke who will uh, help us out. So we effectively have five worker tokens we can place. So where will we place our worker tokens? There's several things we can do. Um, they break down basically into this row here. Um, of these actions. The first one is there's always event cards out and the first event of the game is food crates. You notice some food crates scattered along the shore. So if we want, we can put workers here. Um, if we put one worker here, we will collect one food. If we put two workers here, um, we'll collect two food, one of which will um, be preserved so it won't rot. Um, so we can do, you know, so we can put one or two workers there. Uh, next up, there are no creatures out in the jungle right now, but when creatures start showing up from this creature deck, we could go hunting. We have to send two guys out to go hunting, which could get us fur and foods and also beaten up quite badly. Uh, next up, we can try to build stuff. And you can see there's quite a few things out here we can try to build. Um, and there's also, we can start building our shelter. We can build a roof on our shelter. We can um, build a palisade around our shelter and we can build weapons. Um, we start with none of these things, but we can build weapons, which helps us hunt. So we could build, we could put workers into scr um, scrounging um, for resources, uh, you know, gathering resources. Um, and the way that works is if there were, if we had explored any of these tiles nearby, we could send guys out and scrounge for resources there. But currently at the beginning of the game, we haven't explored anywhere, so effectively we can't do this action in the first turn. And um, we can explore, which means we can send our workers out and start exploring to find more tiles so we can get more resources and other things. Um, next up, we can clear out, we can clean up around camp. I forget what it's called. Uh, uh, arrange camp, which is a morale building exercise. Um, if somebody comes here, we basically, they get two determination tokens and we get to move our morale up, which can be handy because everybody likes a nice tidy camp. And then finally, the last thing we can do is we can just take a breather. We can rest um, and heal ourselves. So um, this is, you know, simultaneous work selection. You know, the teams work as a team to figure out how they want to use these five actions. And let's see, for starters, um, we're going to do some exploration, shall we? So I'm going to explore over here. And Jen's going to send a guy over here. And we'll have um, Friday. He'll come along with Jen to help her explore. And um, let's see. Do we want to explore a third one? Um, no, I don't think so. I think instead, for the other thing, uh, we, we see we can't do any scourging because we haven't explored yet. We could start trying to build some stuff. There's so many things we could build. We could build a shovel, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. But I'm going to wait on that a little bit. We'll do that a little bit later. I am actually going to, for the last thing, I'm going to, um, we're going to do this expedition for food, just to get it out of the way so we have some more food. Because we will need to eat before the day is out. So we want to have some guaranteed food. And we will, remember, if there's two guys who went there, um, we'll get two food. So um, both Jen and I are both going to go and, you know, indicate we're doing this two action. Now, it could, you know, Jen could have just, you know, spent her entire day doing that. But this kind of represents we're both working together on it. We're, um, Jen and Friday are working on this, and I'm exploring by myself out here. So we have done the planned action phase. Really simple worker placement stuff. Now we resolve our actions. And um, you know, we kind of do them in the order of, of, of this layout. So first of all, we do events. Hey, we came here, we tried to do events. So both Jen and I worked on this. Um, we bring our workers back. And we were successful in collecting um, a food and a non-perishable food. So we grab a food, which will perish at the end of the day if we don't eat it. And, you know, um, you know some uh, extra food that's in a crate or a barrel or something or it's pickled, so it's going to last a while. Now, this stuff goes up in our future resources. We don't have access to this right now until all our actions are done. Right now, we only have access to what's in here. We don't have access to this stuff. But hooray, we have way went on an expedition for food. So this is now out of the game. Moving on, we are not doing any hunting. We are not doing any building because we didn't place any workers on anything we could build. We are not doing any gathering. Let's move on to the exploration, shall we? There is some exploring going on out here. Now, I should mention, you'll notice um, there's these indicators saying that you could send one worker or two workers. One worker, two worker, one worker, two worker. This one requires two workers. Remember on that event I did, I could choose one or, and you know, these are singles. The number of workers you send um, can radically change your chances of success. Um, basically what it means is whenever on these guys, 
If you ever send two workers to do it, whatever it is, you will automatically succeed. So Jen is going to automatically succeed at this exploration. If you send one worker, you have to roll the dice and take your chances. So that's what's happening here. Let's do Jen's first because it's guaranteed to succeed because she went out and she had Friday helping her. She brings her worker markers back and they have discovered, guaranteed, a river. Okay, so we have now discovered a river. Now this is a place where we can go foraging for wood and fish, much like where we started. Um, we also get to a discovery token and there's a mystery token. Now let's look at these things one at a time. Um, first of all, it's a river. That means we now have access to new resources that lets us build more stuff. Um, at the beginning of the game, because we had access to the beach, we could build the shovel. That's what this marker indicates. But for instance, we don't have access to mountains, so we can't do fire yet. We haven't found flint. But we now have access to a beach. So we put a couple markers on here to say, hey, the beach requirement has been met for the map and the dam. So that means, um, and we have one wood, so we could build a dam now, we could build a map. We have more stuff we can build. So that's what having found um, the river meant. Uh, next up, we get a single exploration tile. So we come in here to the cup of exploration tiles. And what do we get? What do we get? Ta-da! Ah, it's a secret scenario specific thing. This is just a general purpose icon. So we come over to the key for the castaway scenario and we are told that this X means it's a pirate saber. We have found a pirate saber which will help us in combat. Now, um, this goes up into we don't have access to it yet. If we need to do combat right now, we don't have this pirate saber. We'll, we won't have it till next turn. So it's in our future collection stuff. So we got the, um, there's also a mystery token. For mystery tokens, you come over here to your uh, resource and you'll notice in the beginning, mysteries have no effect. But in other scenarios, like say volcano, the first time you, uh, you go to a mystery, it's a small temple. Then it's the ruined village and the hidden cave and the underground temple. So there's a lot of storytelling potentially, but you know, we're playing the simple intro solution. So basically there is no mystery there. So um, we have successfully found that basically Jen went out and she's got access to more stuff and we got a pirate saver for our trouble. Now we're going to go me. Um, I went by myself. So what that means is I take my worker back. I don't automatically succeed. I have to roll the exploration dice and see what happens. Let's roll and see what happens. Ta-da! Okay. V for victory. I did succeed. You'll notice um, there's a five out of six chance I will succeed. Um, there's a one in six chance that I will actually fail, in which case I'll just get some determination, um, which is nice, but it kind of sucks when you, when you fail. But anyway, I did succeed. So um, that means we actually have um, uncovered the what's it. So let's actually take a look at what we found. It's a mountain. Um, very nice. And um, another discovery token. So what I find. Ah, another symbol. So we found the medallion of the lady, which is an item we can use if we ever need more determination. I guess we look at the lady and we take inspiration from her or something. We get more determination. Anyway, so we got that. Um, we, it's a mountain. So that means there's going to be new stuff we can build. We can now build the knife, the fire, the, uh, you know, the knife or the fire. So I'll put markers on that to indicate they're buildable in a future turn. Also, no, actually just, yeah, th those are the two things I uh, haven't found out knife, fire. Let's see. Um, a, there is a creature somewhere in that mountain range. So we take from the creature deck, we draw randomly, and there is now somebody we could go out hunting if we want. Um, we have access to wood, and um, you'll notice there's this camp icon. If we actually move our camp over here, it will automatically convert into a shelter and will be protected from the elements. Right now, we're just sleeping out in the open air. We could either build a shelter here or we could move camp and then basically kind of hide out in, in a cave and be protected from the elements. So I succeeded, remember I succeeded, um, and you know, we, you know, there's some monsters out there, uh, you know, we found a medallion, etc., etc. Um, this was blank, so I didn't get hurt. Um, you know, so there's a 50-50 chance whenever you have to roll the dice that you would get hurt. But fortunately, I did not take any damage. However, the question mark came up, and there's a 50-50 chance on this as well, I think. Is it? Um, oh no, it's very likely. It's a five and six chance that when you roll, you are going to have to draw a card. So let's draw the card, shall we? We come over here to the explore deck and we see what happens when I went out exploring. Boink. An old hut. Ah, I stumbled across an old hut. While wandering through the forest, you come across an old hut. I must now decide, or you know, we as a group decide. Um, do we discard this card, which means we don't go into the hut, everything's fine, no danger, we just walk away from the hut, stay away. Or we can draw two mystery cards um, and it could turn out they might either be a monster that attacks us in the hut or a treasure we find in the hut. And if we do that, we then have to shuffle this into the event deck. And what that means is, you know, at some later turn, this card will come back up. And when it does, 
We will be haunted by Robinson's ghost. Last night, you had nightmares about Robinson's death. I guess this must be Robinson's hut, um, in which case we lose some, you know. So this is actually one of the most brilliant features of this game, that you have to make choices about. Do I want this short-term gain, although in this case it's risky, I might get a monster, um, but then have this long-term issue that might come back and haunt me. I've seen cards like, um, you can find a cache of bamboo, which is, hey, great, you get a bunch of wood, but you know it's crappy wood. And at some point in the future, whatever you built with it will collapse. So. Um, just for fun, I am actually going to say yes. Let's go into the hut. Now that means we are going to shuffle this into the deck. Uh, da, da, da. I'll shuffle off. De, de, de. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. La, la, la. It's kind of hard shuffling one-handed. But, um, de, de, de. okay. And it's now somewhere kind of in the middle of the event deck. That, um, that being haunted by Robinson's ghost will come back to haunt us. But in the meantime, we found a hut. Now, you remember, that was draw two mystery cards and, you know, or, um, and to try to get and you know, resolve either monsters or treasures. Let's see what I get. First of all, zoink. All right, this is neither a monster nor a treasure. This is poison, so we ignore it. Just gone. Next up, zoink. Hey, it's treasure. We found an old rifle in the... Okay, you found an old rifle and some gunpowder. Keep this card. Any player uh, can use it once to temporarily get rid... You know, to temporarily get plus three on attack and discard. So this is a one-shot rifle. This is now part of our inventory. I should have mentioned, by the way, we also started with some random inventory. This is drawn from starter cards that include things like, uh, you know, an old pipe that, you know, re relaxes you, an empty bottle, which you can use as a weapon. We started with a pistol, which... Um, oh, I forgot to put the markers on it, which gets two shots... One, two. We get two shots and then it's useless. And we also started with hammer and nails, which we can use for building, but only twice to help us out. But now, in addition to those, we also have an old rifle. So, um, between the pistol and the old rifle, we could maybe go hunting next turn and see what we get, because we wouldn't want to go hunting out with some weapons. Alrighty. So, um, we got lucky. I explored. I found a hut, found a rifle inside, but somewhere down the road, I will be haunted by the ghost of that hut. Okie doke. Um, that was it. So explore. Nobody tried to clean up the camp and nobody healed. So we are now done with the action phase, which means we now move on to weather. Um, and so what you do is you look at your scenario card and right now in the first month um, of, of the year, it, or you know, the first month where there's, uh, there's no weather. So we don't have to roll any weather, but later on we'll have to start rolling dice and the weather could hurt us bad. Um, so that was fine. Uh, we got a free pass. And now finally it's nighttime. Time to eat and time to sleep under the stars. So, um, at this point, all the stuff, you know, we have access to all our things. So we now have access to um, a pirate saber, which is another weapon. We are loaded for bear. And the lady medallion, which gives us some more determination. We can use these whenever we need them. You know, same for all this stuff. Um, but we need to eat. There are two of us. Friday has gone back into the jungle. He doesn't need uh, to be fed at night. So I need a food and Jen needs a food. Fortunately, we happen to have two perishable foods. So we'll eat those. Because if not, they would rot and disappear now. So we're going to eat them. And we've got this, um, you know, the pickled herring or whatever, which we'll save for another day. And we still got our wood. So um, we, didn't, we didn't go hungry tonight, which means our, our damage meter didn't increase. Um, and now we have to determine, uh, we have to go to sleep. If we were sleeping in a shelter, everything would be cool, everybody would be kosher. But we are not. We are sleeping out in the great outdoors, so it gets very cold at night. So we're each going to take, boink, one wound. And you know, this is not necessarily a point of damage. This is just like a general purpose. You know, it could, you could be sad and this will knock it down. Or you can be cold and knock you down. This is like an overall, just how beat up are you? And so we're both a little bit down from having slept out in the cold on the beach. Hopefully tomorrow we will um, get a shelter, which I think we will because, oh yes, actually, in fact, let's, oh, actually, I forgot. During the night days, um, first of all, we eat. Then, if we want, we can relocate camp before we sleep. Let's say we did that. Let's say we actually relocate our camp to these mountains. So that means we're not sleeping out on the beach. We're sleeping in a cave, which means everything was cool. Yay! What a lovely start. Um, let's see if there's no shelter. But we have a shelter because we had the cave. So we didn't take a wound. Now, um, you know, any leftover food we had rots, if it's not pickled. Um, let's see. And uh, we move on to round number two. And now I was the first player that turn. Now Jen is the first player. And um, it's time for a new round. Okay. So we've won our 12 rounds. We have gotten, we've, we've gotten very little wood. We haven't moved very far forward, but we have explored. We have found some stuff. So let's start on the next thing. We are going to draw an event card. This always starts every turn. A precipice. During a hurricane, the ground has slid. Your camp is on the edge of a precipice. How fortunate that we, yeah. All right. So um, now that means a couple of things. First of all, it means because we're on the edge of a precipice, you'll notice this green, um, 
what do you call it? Uh, question mark. That means the green question mark comes out and goes on the green exploration deck. Because we're on the edge of a precipice, it's implicitly more dangerous to explore now. And that's what this means. Let's see. Now, if possible, choose an island tile adjacent to your camp and turn it face down. It becomes inaccessible. Wow. Because we're on the precipice, we can no longer get back to the beach or here. So we have to decide which space do we not want to get to. I think, hmm. Well, they both offer the same stuff. So I'm going to say we can no longer get back to the beach. Um, and uh, you know, so we turn that over. The volcano, by the way, means nothing. But there is a, uh, a scenario where the volcano will actually explode because it's volcano island. But this means nothing. It just means we can't get there. All righty. So um, that was the precipice. And now um, there's the other half of this event card, building a bridge. If we want, we can build a bridge, which would let us turn this back over and get access to the bridge to the um, beach again. To do it, we uh, and if we do that, we get three determination, um, which would be useful. And then we discard the card. If we don't do it. Um, eventually, we, I mean, we only have this turn and next turn, because it slides, you know, it's the arrow, this turn and next turn to actually get this bridge built. Otherwise, this goes off the page, the board, and we will never be able to get back to the beach. So we'll have to decide if we want to do anything about that. So anyway, that was the event. Now we go on to morale. We didn't adjust our morale at all, so still we get no determination. Probably should have done that last turn, but say lobby. Move on to production. We are now in the mountains where we get one wood. So the wood comes up. We still, so we have two wood and one food left over. And unfortunately, um, nothing else. On the beach, it was nice. We got wood and food. Now we only get wood. So now it is time to plan our day. And again, we got our five workers. What are we going to do? Okay, well, first of all, I think for starters, I'm going to clean up camp a little bit because we really want to raise our morale so we can start earning some determination tokens. That would be nice. Um, Jen, I think, is going to go hunting because we got all these weapons, so let's go hunting. Now, you can't go hunting alone. So Jen's going to go. She could just like, you know, um, put all her workers on it. But you know what? Um, what the heck? Jen and I will go together. And now with, what that means is we have to decide who is the leader of this little expedition. So I've said Jen is. She's on top, and I'm just coming along to assist. Um, which that means if there's any damage taken, Jen is the leader. She will take the damage in this um, little hunt we're about to do. So we've still got Friday, and Jen's got one other action she can do for today. Oh, what should we do? What should we do? Should we, do? Um, we could build some stuff. Let's see, we could explore, but because there's a little bit more danger, I don't think we'll explore. We'll take a break. Oh, but exploring is nice. Hmm. Yeah. Um, you know what? I think we will explore. Uh, so Jen will explore. Uh, we'll just take our chances, see what happens. And then um, finally, good old um, Friday. I have to remember, can Friday build stuff? Because if so, I would like to have him stay around the camp and build some stuff. Let's look at his rules again. Uh, there are a lot of rules. The rules are actually very, very difficult, um, which again is why I definitely recommend having that player aid. But anyway, so uh, Friday, especially you can assign each type of action in a single pawn. Yes, I believe. Yeah, he should be able to build. So Friday's going to stick around. He's going to build some stuff for us. All righty. Well, um, what's he going to build? So we can build a map, which helps us explore. We can build a dam if we want to use wood. I don't think we want to. Oh, also, in addition to all these things, in this scenario, we have special stuff we can build. We can build a hatchet. We can build a mast. We are going to build the hatchet. He's going to come down here and build the hatchet, which is a scenario-specific element. So we'll get to that in a minute, and we'll see if he succeeds. All righty. Uh, so we placed our workers, and now we start doing it. Um, again, we didn't work on building the bridge, um, so we might run out of time. We might not get a chance to ever get back to the... But we skipped that. Jen's going to go hunting. There's only one creature in our deck, so we'll find out what it is. Boink! It's a bear. Um, I think that's the second toughest creature in the game. Uh, it does six points of damage. It will actually damage our weapons by one. However, it produces a lot of food. Five food. Um, and it, uh, what do you call it? Uh, produces some furs as well. So that's pretty handy. So let's fight. Basically, what we have to do is we have to figure out how many of our weapons we are going to bring to bear ha -ha, in, this, in this fight. Um, and let's see. Interestingly, now... We haven't built any weapons, so we're only going to have to be able to use our temporary weapons here. So um, I think I will definitely take this um, so we can fire our pistol once. And what the heck, we'll use the rifle. So between the pistol, which is three, and the rifle, which is three, we will do six, which means we take out the bear, no problem. The rifle's gone, and one of our two uses of the pistol is gone, but we dispatch the bear easy peasy. Now, if we had weapons, which we haven't built yet, those weapons would now get damaged from the fight. But since we were only using our temporary weapons, no problem there. So we get five food, yummy, yummy bear meat. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay, five meat and two furs, which can um, be useful for building. 
Okay, two furs. We don't have them yet, because we won't have them until all the actions are done. But anyway, this bear is toast, and um, we can come home from our successful hunt. Uh, nobody did any scrounging, although this turn we could have scrounged. We could have scrounged over here to get more wood or food. Um, oh, I'm sorry, no. Nobody did build. Yeah, building. We're to the building phase. It is time for Friday to see if he successfully builds a hatchet. So we grab the build dice, it's four brown ones, and we roll, and what does he get? Boink! He succeeded. We now have a hatchet. He got hurt. Ouch. And there was no question mark, so no problem there. So, where is he? Here he is. He got hurt for one. Ow. You know, banged his uh, finger while building the hatchet. But we now have a hatchet, which you'll notice means plus one wood. Put this on the top of your camp. From now on, for the rest of the game, because we have a hatchet, we generate extra wood around camp, which is important because remember, we have only um, 12 turns to build all this wood. So, okay, we now have a hatchet. Well done, Friday. He got hurt a little bit, but not too bad. Um, let's see. Now we move on to scrounging. Nobody scrounged. Nobody explored. Oh, wait, no. Jen did decide to explore. He's out here going to explore. So we're going to explore. Now, what this means is, um, remember, if you uh, t explore with two, it automatically succeeds. You don't have to roll. Because this has happened, even though you would succeed, you would still have to draw a card. Now, we don't really care about that because Jen went out by herself. So she was going to have to roll anyway. But let's see what happens. Uh, so we roll three greens. Okay, so she succeeded, she didn't get hurt, and she had to draw a card. Now, in this case, there's two question marks. It doesn't matter. We still only draw one card. But, you know, even if I had been lucky and hadn't had to draw a card, we'd still have to draw a card. And sometimes these are good. Most of the time, these are bad. But anyway, so Jen has explored successfully. So let's see what she found. She uh, didn't get hurt. And she found another mountain range, which means there's nothing new we get to build. Um, but there's food and wood there. There's another exploration tile we get. Let's see what we get. Do, 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 do. And we get, doink. Um, this is a, uh, what is this? This is an upgrade to the pot. If we build the pot, um, it, uh, basically we can um, you know, cook food to make ourselves stronger for the upcoming fight. So that'll be available later. Um, there's another mystery token, but remember, in the first thing, mysteries have no effect. And so that's what she explored. So basically we found the pot upgrade. Not the greatest thing in the world, but c'est la vie. Um, that's luck of the draw. Uh, so we're building the story here. Um, let's see. So anyway, so Jen did that exploration. I stayed home and I cleaned up camp. So we go up one. Now that means two things. In the following turn, because our morale is up, um, whoever's the leader that turn will get some determination. But I get two determination points right now. And determination points are hugely important because they're, these are what we use to do all our special class abilities. Because I have two determination, I can make grandma's special recipe and turn food into healing food. Or I can be better at scrounging. I can reroll dice. Or I can make food out of nothing. Stone soup. Yum yum. Or if, it's, if the weather is bad and we're getting cold, I can brew up some hooch so we don't mind those cold winter nights. Um, but I need determination tokens to do that. So I just grabbed a couple determination tokens and we are done. So we have uh, resolved. Now we do weather. Again, we're in phase two. There's no um, weather to roll. There's no effects that had caused bad weather. So everything's fine. We move on to nighttime where we have to discard food. Now because we uh, killed that bear, we have plenty of food to eat. Yum, yum. Um, and now, but unfortunately, at the end of the turn, we're going to lose all that other meat, which really, really, really is not so great. Um, ugh, and I'm wondering if we should do something about that. Oh my gosh, I don't think there is. Um, because like if we had built this cellar, we could store our food, but we haven't built that yet. Oh, Friday, should you build? No, but Friday, couldn't, we couldn't have had him build the cellar unless we had first built the shovel. So we're going to lose all that food. Oh, that's so sad. But, say la vie, that's the, you know, we should have planned a little bit better. Um, but, you know, who knew we were going to get a bear? We might have fought squirrels. Who knew? Anyway, so um, we have eight. Now, if we wanted, I could turn some of that food using my determination into healing. In fact, well, you know what? It's going to get thrown away anyway. Let's do that. I'm going to spend my two determination points I just got. Discard two. Um, and, um, you know, and basically get rid of a food. Right? So uh, all this food is available to us. So get rid of one of the foods. So that's gone. And it heals too. And I could spread that healing when we want. Remember, Friday got hurt. So he's been healed up. So at least one of the food went to healing him with grandma's secret recipe. Um, all right. Now, we are in a shelter. So we aren't exposed, so we're not going to get hurt. Um, we can move the shelter if we want, but we're not going to. We discard our excess food, and oh, so sad, all that bear meat just went to waste. And now we move on to stage number three. Um, brand new day, so, uh, and actually the next stage, we're going to have to start, it's going to go into fall, and we're going to start getting bad weather. We really 
should build a roof before that happens, because otherwise the cold will really, the rain will really start getting to us. So um, now I am the first player. We start again. We get a new event, which means this event slides over to make room for the new event. And the new event is otters. You lost the fight for a food source. Ah, the fish closest to your camp is exhausted. Cover it with a thing. If there's no fish, each player gets hurt by one. I guess the otters attack us directly. Now that means, okay, so we have to say, you know what? Um, the, let's see, we could be either this space or this space. I think we'll just block this space. So um, that we can't get food from that area because the otters have wiped it all out. Um, and also you'll notice there is a book icon. If we come over here, in the starting thing, book has no effect. But in other things, books could, you know, do stuff like, uh, let's see, in this Jenny needs help. Book, every time a book comes up, this hurricane is approaching and a storm hits your camp. So, you know, books can be bad, but in this, in this first one, they aren't so bad. So, um, we said, but however, now we have the event, we could go hunting for otter. Um, if we, if we uh, put some work into it, uncover the exhausted, and we can, you know, clear up so we can start collecting food there again. Um, and so we have to decide if we want to go otter hunting. But, uh, so that was the event. This, we're running out of time to make the bridge. If we want to make the bridge before it you know, goes off the page. Now we um, check morale. And remember, because I boosted it, we are at one. So um, whoever's the leader, which this turn is me, gets one um, resolve, or um, yeah, resolve. So I've got one resolve. One I can't do anything with. I need at least two or three. And um, now we go back to planning. So what are we gonna do this turn? Uh, oh, wait, oh, I forgot though. I forgot our production, we get one wood plus one more wood because we have that hatchet. So we've got four wood now. Um, we should really start using that wood for good. Let's see, what are we gonna do this turn? Um, I think maybe because we're almost to the point where it's gonna be stormy, we should start building a roof for our little temporary shelter in the cave so we don't get rained on. Um, I guess you'd consider that a front porch or something like that. But we could also use the wood to, um, to um, basically no, okay, for, this is another thing we could build. We could basically take the mast, if we had some rope, some wood, and some pelts, we could basically take the mast and turn it into wood for the fire. Remember, we have to fill this up too. Maybe we should spend, I think that's what we'll do. We'll spend a couple of, we'll spend one wood of our cash and um, you know, increase the bonfire by a little bit because we have to be working on that, which leaves us three wood. What are we gonna do with that wood? Um, in a two-player game, that means we could, um, we'd have enough wood, or we have furs. We can use wood or furs to build this stuff. We could build some weapons to protect ourselves. We need weapons to go hunting those otters. Um, um, oh, I think we definitely want to build the map, because that'll help with exploration. That's a big, big deal. Let's definitely do that. So, okay, um, we will have, let's see, I'm going to try building the map. No, actually, you know what? Let's, yeah, let's, I'll, I'll work on building the map. And um, now, if I want to guarantee that I don't have to roll a dice and maybe hurt my thumb, I could spend both my guys or somebody could help me, but I'm going to take a chance and just try and build a map without any trouble. Uh, what else am I going to do? Let's see. Uh, oh my goodness, so many things, so many things. We could clear up camp a little more just so our morale improves. Um, let's see. Oh, actually, I think we need to start building some more stuff. You know what? I don't want to lose any more food again, so let's definitely build the shovel so that later on we can build the cellar. Um, so I'm going to spend this turn building, and I'm going to take a bit, maybe a bit risky with it as well. Um, although, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build. Um, Friday is going. Now, we're in a bit of a pickle. Um, all our areas around here have already been explored. If we want to spend two guys, like Friday and Jen could go out, they could explore out further away. Um, but that means we'd have to roll dice. If we wanted to roll di avoid dice, we'd have to have three. We had all that spending because, we, because our camp is now surrounded by explored stuff. I don't think we should do that, but maybe we should scavenge a little bit. We should, probably should, because we need to be getting more wood. So I think Friday will go out and scavenge for wood nearby. Jen will go out and scavenge for wood nearby. And um, let's see, will she, we, we, we could help out to make sure nobody fails at it. But that's the thing, um, if you like double down, um, you know, and, and ensure you won't have to roll the dice and maybe take chances, you slow way down and there's very little time to get everything done. So they, you know, that's always the push pull of this game. Do we want to build, we have some more wood, do we want to build this bridge so we can get back to the beach? I don't know if I care about the beach that much. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't think so. I think we're going to let that go. Should we build something else? I think we want to build something. This is going to be the building phase. So we're building a map, or we're building a shovel, and um, let's see. You want to build the dam? Ah, we're going to build the dam because the dam means we have access to, to um, food that doesn't go bad. 
That's a handy thing. So we've placed all our workers. We'll see how all this works out. Um, we start resolving. We've, uh, we've not done any of these things. Uh, we're not hunting, because there's nothing to hunt. Um, on to the building. Let's have me go first. I'm trying to build a shovel by myself. Wish me luck, everybody. Dee, dee, dee. Um, oh, I failed at building the shovel, which means I get two, you know, resolve, which you know means I can cook more yummy food. But I failed. I got hurt, so that was not good. So I just took a damage point. And um, I have to roll a die, see what we get. Oh, by the way, this is from last turn, this is gone. So, boink! Dark clouds are in the sky, it's gonna be a hard day. It's raining hard. Put a rain cloud on the weather space, shuffle into the event deck. Curses. So, where, um, there's gonna be some rain today, that's not gonna be good. And this goes into the event deck. Later on, after the rain, um, the shelter is so strong they can withstand even the heavy rain, so we'll get a free bonus to our palisades later on when this gets shuffled in. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, shuffle, 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 shuffle. Oh, it's difficult to shuffle one-handed. Anyway, I messed up the island. All right, so I failed to make the shovel, which means later on we won't be able to, but it'll be a while before we can make the uh, cellar. That's too bad. Um, moving on, let's see if I, have, if I have any better luck with the map. This is why you want to assign two guys so you have a guaranteed success, but we didn't do that. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Boink. A second failure. Oh, that's so lousy. More determination, though, so that'll help out later. Um, and at least I didn't have to draw a card, and I didn't get hurt. So, well, not, not, you know. Now, Jen's turn. She's going to build the dam. Let's see. Considering how bad my rolls are going to be, I'm going to use one of Jen's special abilities. This is going to be like a one-two combo. Now, Jen has not gotten any um, resolve yet, so she can't use her special stuff like craftsmanship, um, which lets her re-roll, or um, handyman, which, lets, which makes her uh, better at building. But remember earlier we found the medallion of the lady? We are going to discard this medallion of the lady, which immediately gives Jen three resolve. She looked at the lady and was inspired by her beautiful visage. So now she's got resolve. She is going to immediately discard all that resolve to, um, you know, to the handyman. This is a very basic instruction. It won't take more than the day to build, says Jen, um, to get an additional helper um, for the building action you take. So that means Jen gets one of these little uh, worker helpers, um, you know, just to, you know, this builder thing. And now Jen is basically, she's a super builder because she used her special ability. She does not fail in the dam. She doesn't even have to roll her dice. We succeed at building the dam, which means in the future turns, we will get um, free food from the dam. Now this comes over into our Place we'll get later. Oh, by the way, I forgot the pot upgrade, which if we ever build the pot, it is implicitly upgraded. So later on, um, you know, the dam will be available. But anyway, well done, honey. Um, she took inspiration, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that, I think was it for building. Yep. And now we move on to scour scourging. Uh, we have two people scour scour you know, scavenging for um, wood. So let's see how Friday does. Um, because again, they went by themselves. So Friday has to roll the scavenge die. Boink. Um, he had victory and no damage. Well done, Friday. Who's the man? Friday is the man. So he just found some wood. Just comes up here and he comes home. Let's see how well Jen does. Uh, da, da, da. She also gets some wood. Um, she had victory as well. So she gets some wood, um, which is important. Remember, we need lots of wood. Um, but she's going to roll. Let's see what happened while she went out scavenging. There was a weather breakdown. You see a storm coming to the island. Shuffle this into the event. So nothing happened bad now, but later on there will be an extra storm that we will have to deal with. So again, this just goes into the event deck somewhere. D D D. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. As you can see, we're starting to get to a point where before too long, some of these events are going to catch up with us. And da da da. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Event deck back. Okie doke. So. But she did succeed. We've got more wood. We're, we're, we're working on the bonfire. That's very, very good. Um, so that was her attempt to scavenge up some wood from a neighboring area. Um, we didn't do any exploration. We didn't clean up the camp. We didn't do this. Okay, moving on to weather. Now, we're still not to the place where we have to roll dice. However, you remember there was that event that caused this weather. So there is one rainy weather right now. We have no roof. If we had one point of roof, we wouldn't care about the rain because it would cancel each other out. If there were like three storm clouds, if we had three roofs, it would cancel each other out. But right now we have no roof. So that means we, uh, we take one point of damage unless we want to pay one wood and one food um, you know, to avoid it. Now, currently we don't even have the food we need, you'll notice. Um, to, uh, to do it. So I think we're each going to take one point of damage because of the rain. One, two. That was Jen's first point of damage. But don't forget, I can always cook up some yummy soup to, to make that all better. So we've uh, hit the weather. Now it's nighttime. So now we got to eat. Now we only have one food. We did not collect any other food this turn. That's unfortunate. Um, 
However, let's see. Uh, so we're each going to take a point of damage. Boom, we take a point of damage just to get that done. Ouch and ouch. Now, if I wanted, I could mitigate that because we do have one bit of food. I could turn that into, you know, grandma soup with my resolve and heal us back up a point. But I don't think I'm going to really worry about that right now because maybe we'll need that food for something else later. So we just took our, we, you know, we went hungry tonight. No big deal. We could relocate our camp again if we wanted, but we won't because we want to stay in the shelter. Um, we move on. Jen's first player, and it's the first day of autumn. Time is passing. We get a new event. The precipice will never go away. We can never get back to the beach now. We have one more turn to go hunting for otters. And, hey, you remember this? It's the old hut. Um, last night, we had nightmares about Robinson's death. Each player discards a resolve. So Jen didn't have any, but I just lost one of my resolves when I built up. And now we draw another card. So this is out, and we see what the real event is. Weather breakdown. You see, oh, this is another. So the shuffle did not go very well for us. Um, it's best to have a place to hide. Put a storm in the weather space. So now we're going to have a storm hit us this turn. And replace that. Not very good. This is going to hurt as well. And now let's see what the damn event is. Loss of hope. No surprise after all that. Loss of hope. Hope, it, you know, the loss of hope is the end. Um, this round, the first player, who is Jen, can only build. Um, you know, clear up camp or rest. She won't go out because she's lost all hope. Um, however, there's a new action that uh, if somebody uh, comes and rests, preferably Jen, she'll get some resolve. And if we don't do this, the whole camp will lose two morale later on. So that's our new event. Um, let's see. And so it's, uh, you know, we, um, oops. Um, Jen gets one resolve on the morale thing. Dee, dee, dee. We uh, g gather two more wood, which is good. We're definitely getting the wood, which is what we need to do. Got to keep our eye on the prize. Look at all this wood we've got. Oh, we've also got a dam. I forgot about that. So um, we have the dam now. And if I recall correctly, the dam basically means um, it's plus two food. When does that happen? To the rules, to the rules. Dam, dam, dam. I can say dam. Um, the Damn. Gives two w food that doesn't rot. Okay. Is that a one-time thing? All right. Well, anyway, we got two more food. Yeah, it was just a one-time thing. Um, you know, so uh, we're doing pretty good on food. It was a simple thing to build. Um, the food will stick around until we need it. Um, and it is now time. Oh, did I, I grab the wood? So it's now time to go to work. And we got five guys. I think I've actually shown everything. I've gone scrounging. I've built some stuff. I've explored. I've played. I haven't rested. If you just want to take a break, you can heal yourself. Um, you know, we've seen that. And that kind of gives you the overall flow. We haven't actually even, you know, we're almost halfway through the game. We haven't actually built anything. We need to start building palisades. If we don't have a palisade, this storm that's going to hit us is going to hurt us. Um, you know, although, and we're actually going to have to roll, a, what do you call it, a weather die this turn. So if we roll the, we might get another storm cloud. So this turn, it's very likely we'll get hit by weather. Um, so we really need to start protecting ourselves from the elements. But we also need to be turning more of this wood into the bonfire because, you know, the boats are on their way. But we also need to build more items so we can have more powers. But we also need to keep track of everybody and make sure nobody gets hurt too much. But we also have to explore more. And so you get the idea. Always lots of pressure, lots of stuff going on. Um, you know, a very um, you know, hardcore, in-your-face, uh, intense fight for survival. Now, this is only just starting out. Things are going to get more dire. You know, it, it looks a little bad. We're not hurt too much, but we're running out of time. But this weather is going to start beating down on us because in these first few turns, we did not actually build a significant shelter for ourselves. We kind of got lucky and found the cave, but we need more support. We really have to start focusing on that. Um, we've got some food for a little while, and I can always make more food to make up for the fact that we're not eating very well, but, you know, eating much, but at least we'll be eating well with Grandma's recipe. Um, you know, Jen, her abilities, she can, um, you know, get much better at building stuff if we can get her some more resolve, but that hasn't worked out so far. Um, um, and you kind of get the basic idea. If at the end of these uh, 12 rounds we've built enough wood, we'll win. If either of us die, um, we lose. Simple as that. And that is Robinson Crusoe. So hopefully you have a very good idea of how this plays, how the overall flow works, and you know how there's all the push and pull. What do I think? Well, first of all, what I think doesn't really matter. Hopefully you guys have a good enough idea what you think of whether this game would be good. And I can certainly see why a lot of people will love this game. Um, you know, it just ratchets up the tension more and more and more. And, you know, as, as you keep getting hit by events like loss of hope or um, a thorny bush that actually, um, you know, these are cute. Um, thorny bush means you actually injure your arm. You put a little marker on your arm and then this goes in and then later on that thorny bush, if you don't have a cure, it, um, it, it gets infected, um, you know, or... 
you know, surprises in the bushes or, um, you know, oh, we found a hidden rope, though. So there's all kinds of ups and downs and lefts and rights. But the game is unrelenting. Uh, and, you know, it is a fight to the finish to stay alive. Now, that said, that doesn't really work for me and Jen. Um, we like our uh, co-op games to actually have a bit more ebb and flow, a bit more peaks and valleys, um, instead of just like this constant onslaught of bad thing after bad thing after bad thing after bad thing. You play Pandemic, you know, every once in a while you get an all clear, and you can actually kind of regroup, and you know, okay, well, we, we can take control. In this game, it's a constant war of attrition as it beats you down, down, down. I would very much liken it to ghost stories in that feel, that, you know, you just it just keeps coming faster and faster, and you're barely holding on, you know, by the seat of your pants, will you survive? Maybe you will, maybe you won't. It's a very hard game to win. So, if you like that kind of hardcore, extreme um, push aggression of in a, in a co-op, you're going to love it. The other thing you're going to love about this game is if you love games like Arkham Horror that have lots of really great and clever thematic gameplay that's weaved in in really nice um, you know rules. Like how these um, events work where, okay, you take a short-term game and it goes in your event deck and later on it'll come back to haunt you. That's brilliant. And there's tons of sweet, wonderful, clever thematic elements like that. So... Uh, basically, if um, if you've always wanted to play Arkham Horror, but you don't like Ameritrash, you don't just like having combat for rolling dice nonstop. You want to have more of a Euroy thing with like um, uh, you know uh, you know worker placement and and goods transitions and you know and all that kind of stuff. This might be the game for you. Um, if you like a co-op that just beats you relentlessly, this might be the game for you. Um, it's a very tactic. You know, you can make up really big plans, but then when you start drawing these cards, it all falls apart. You can avoid drawing the cards, but then you aren't getting stuff done fast enough. So there's definitely a lot of thinking that goes on. There's a lot of tactical thinking. How will we survive this round? And then you see what happens to you. What does the game hit you with? Now how do we survive the next round? If you like that, you're going to love this game. And I suspect a lot of people, this is going to make it onto a lot of people's top 10 of the year. Didn't for us because it's just a different type of experience Jen and I are looking for in co-op. But you guys definitely decide for yourself whether you like it. And that is Robinson's Crusoe. Uh, Adventure on the Cursed Island. Thanks, everybody. I'm Richard Hamm. Hope you enjoyed this. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.